میسی Comfort, riches, all that this world has to offer, and you sing, Jesus is better. You know, make my heart believe. That's really a good theme for it this morning, but before we get in, I got kind of a lighthearted question. Are you guys board game families? Are you guys play board games, like board games, some of you? Yeah, some of you are like, woo, some of you are like, that is not my thing. Um, I like playing the games. But there are some games that it's like, it takes forever to set up the game. It's like, why are there so many pieces? Like, I remember like Monopoly. You got some money, you got your little dog or your hat, and that's it. That's how you started. That wasn't that complicated. We've been playing this board game at our house recently, and it's one of the easiest games to play. But there are so many pieces to set up, and it takes forever it takes as long to set up the game as it seems like it does to play it and I just approach it and I'm thinking when we first started this is going to be impossible like none of this will make sense there's just stuff everywhere and within like five minutes it's like the easiest game maybe I've ever played in my life and I'm thinking what is happening all right this is a little prep I think that's how this morning's going to feel we're gonna have to set up a lot of different pieces But in the end, I think they will come together and it will make a lot of sense. And it will be encouraging, challenging, and build us up. But I'm just owning it from the front end. It's going to seem a little random in the beginning. All right, we're going to have to kind of get our mind in some places to approach the text well this morning. And the first thing I want to do is get you to think of the term access. Paul mentioned it a minute ago. When you hear the term access, what do you think of? I think most of us in our culture, in our setting, we tend to think of admission, like a ticket, right, or a membership. And so it's something that you're permitted to enter, access. But I need you to expand that a little bit in your mind and make sure that you include safety. In other words, safe access, safe presence. Now, sometimes I'll begin to explain something, and Pastor Jeremy will say, will you explain it to me like I'm from West Virginia? And I say, sure. And it's odd because he is from West Virginia. And so this is for Jeremy, all right? So Jeremy, if you are a Hatfield, you cannot safely stroll through a McCoy holler. If you do, you will face the wrath of McCoy Buckshot. Now suppose Granddaddy McCoy said, no, we're going to give you full access. Full access. Well, then you can enter safely. So watch, access isn't limited to just getting in. It implies safe belonging. No Buckshot. No wrath, peaceful, right standing. All right, now that Jeremy's ready, our big truth this morning is Jesus is our access. He's our access. And we're going to see that in our text in Hebrews, but I want to show you a parallel text and have you keep it in mind as well. So Hebrews is writing to a Hebrew audience. And so the author of Hebrews has been leaning back into the old covenant. We've been going through that. But Paul writes to the Romans to a primarily Gentile audience that's much closer to the way we might think and a little bit further distance from that old covenant. And in Romans chapter 5, Paul is making the same point that we're reading about here in Hebrews. 
And so I'm going to read both of those passages to us. I want you to pay attention. And the reason we're going to do both is because I think Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, will better unpack the point than I can. And I just want you to see it. I want you to be able to notice the the similarities. And maybe it will help us understand the text a little bit. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence... To enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now go with me to Romans chapter 5, begin in verse 1. Again, just listen, follow along and Here the similarities explained a little different. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, But we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly, for one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Jesus is our access. We have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus. Through him... We have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. So we're going to work through this passage in Hebrews, and I want you to keep this parallel in Romans in mind. Just kind of mark it, maybe write it beside of it. And again, as you go back and study, I think it will help you. But a few big ideas that we're going to unpack over the next two weeks, all right? So let's just walk through the text. You'll see them. First, Jesus followers have confidence to enter God's presence. Immediately in verse 19, an audience is established. He says, brothers, that's Christians or Jesus followers. In our parallel in Romans 5, it's those who have been justified by faith, declared right before God by faith. And the author goes on and he says, listen, in the new covenant, you have a new outcome. Verse 19, we have confidence to enter the holy places. We have peace with God. We have obtained access into God's presence. Before, you had to stay on the other side of the curtain. You weren't permitted into the holy places, into the presence of God. But now in Christ Jesus, we have confidence to enter the holy places. Because we are at peace with God. 
We have obtained access into God's presence. And so, just quickly, what's included in that? What does that mean? What does it access into God's presence mean for you and I? There's a lot of ways we can explain it. Just walk through a few. Salvation. We were dead in our sin. Access to God's presence is salvation. It is life. It means reconciliation. Peace with God. The author of Hebrews says Sabbath rest. Right standing. It means we have purpose, value, worth, meaning. Because our value, our worth, our meaning isn't defined by ourselves. It's defined by who God is. It means we have love, access to unchanging, perfect love. We have adoption. We have a new family adopted from the family of Adam into the family of God. Access to a perfect father. It means we have companionship. No more separation. Unashamed. Perfectly secure communion with the creator. It means we have an inheritance. Joint heirs with Jesus. Belonging as a child of God. In summary... It means heaven, access into heaven. And sure, we think of heaven with streets of gold, but what makes heaven heaven is God's presence. Access into heaven. We have confident access, the holy places behind the curtain. In the very presence of God. And so think about this for just a minute. What it means to have confident access into God's presence. And so, you know, just, just take a moment and imagine. We'll be silly for a minute. Just imagine that Pastor David invites you over to his house. All right? And you'll show up and you'll see his little like ring doorbell. And if you're an extrovert, you're waving. And if you're an introvert, you're trying to hide and like, you know, maybe like suck in your belly. Because he's like, what if he's looking at you? But you know what you do? You ring the doorbell, you knock, you'll go in, you'll ask where things are. You won't just like wander through his house, you won't take whatever. There'll there'll be a measure of caution about the way you enter. Now he's invited you in and you have access. Now if you want to see what it really looks like, watch Philip, David's son, enter his house. And Philip just goes in. He doesn't ring the doorbell. He's just doing his thing. It's David's son. It's his house. Run it to a different example. Think of the White House. You don't just walk into the Oval Office and be like, what up, Joe? Whether it's the White House or David's house, listen, you're entering with a measure of caution. So just pause and understand the weight of this proclamation that we have confidence to enter. And we're not talking about some earthly house or some earthly authority. We are talking about the very presence of the one true God. How can that be? How is that? Is because our confidence to enter is through Jesus' sacrifice and not our own. Verse 19, by his blood. Verse 20, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain. That is through his flesh. In Romans chapter 5, remember verse 1, justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith. You will not enter heaven and proclaim, I made it, I did it. Listen, you will enter with confidence and proclaim, he did it. He did. 
I was a slave to sin with a debt I could never pay. But Jesus, by his blood, paid it all. I was lost without hope. I was dead. But Jesus, by his death and resurrection, raised me to life. I had nothing to offer. I was spiritually bankrupt. But Jesus, by his standing, made me a child of God. An heir. See, you will not enter heaven and proclaim, I did it. You will enter and proclaim, he did Second big idea, Jesus' followers have a great high priest. The author's been unpacking this for us. Jesus is the better high priest. He began all the way back, though, in chapter 1, and he said Jesus is the better revelation. God in flesh making himself known, revealing himself to us. And through him, he delivers a Sabbath rest, a perfect rest, peace with God. Because he is the better high priest. A better high priest who oversees a better covenant. A better covenant because Jesus is the better sacrifice. Verse 19, by his blood. Verse 20, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain. That is through his flesh. The old covenant had a curtain that separated us from God's presence but the new covenant you don't enter God's presence through a curtain in some earthly temple no it is access through Jesus he is the new and living way into God's presence and so the argument is this that Jesus' sufficient sacrifice is complete finished now he is our resurrected mediator our eternal high priest, through whom, through his flesh, through his sacrifice, through his existence, through his life, through whom we have access, meaning we are saved by his life. Go back to the Romans passage for just a minute, and after proclaiming a hope that surpasses today's circumstances, Today's sufferings, Paul explains, verse 6, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. That's our sacrifice. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood. Now in the new covenant we are declared right before God by Jesus' sacrifice. Not the blood of bulls and goats. Not some limited picture of what was the old covenant. And so Paul proclaims much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. Jesus' sacrifice is sufficient. God's wrath no longer lies ahead for us. Access into his presence. Verse 10, for if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, you ready? Shall we be saved by his life? Jesus is a great high priest, his life eternally interceding for the justified. This is what the author of Hebrews has been explaining to us. Go back to Hebrews chapter 7 verse 22. This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Notice the specific point isn't limited to the assurance of his past work rather it is his sustaining work 
Okay, what's that mean? It means this. Your access is irrevocable. Jesus' sacrifice is sufficient forever. Again, this is what we're reading in Hebrews, verse 21. We have a great high priest over the house of God. Jesus is our priest forever. The author of Hebrews has been making this point again and again. In 5, 6, he says, you are a priest forever. In 6, 20, Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever. In 7, 17, you are a high priest forever. In 7, 21, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. In 7, 24, he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. And at the end of this great book, he will conclude Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He will not change. So not only did Jesus get you access into heaven, into God's presence, you enter with confidence knowing he can and he will sustain your access. You can't get thrown out. Our confidence to enter is through Jesus' sacrifice, not ours. And our confidence to remain is in who Jesus is, not who we are. Look, I, I've pastored here for over 11 years. I know, I see, I watch, I pray for you. Some of you have real trust issues. They are deep rooted. You've been thrown out. You've been thrown out by co workers, friends, family. And some as a result of your own doing, and some as a result of sin of others. And so there is in you this check, this reservation to put your faith and your hope in something or someone outside of yourself. Church, listen, you can trust in your access into the presence of God because your access is in Jesus. It's not in you, and it's not in some other sinful, broken person or thing. It is in the one true God. And so we get the first of kind of three charges that we'll see in the text, and we'll spend the rest of our time here this morning. Jesus' followers draw near to Jesus with faith. Over the next two months, our author is going to unpack that with faith, it's going to give us a really simple definition of faith that is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen in chapter 11, verse 1. And then he's going to go through and just give us examples that we see faith at work in the life of those who live faithfully in our Old Testament. By the way, quick plug, we started this week a kind of a podcast series in place of our elder letters. It's called By Faith, and we're going through and we're looking at those examples kind of one by one. They're not long. They're only about six or seven minutes or so. They're not too, again, listen to it on your way to work, on the way to taking the kids to school. And one of our teaching pastors is just talking through that, breaking that down to just help you think through what it means to live by faith. But today, focus on verse 22, and see it says, let us, a few weeks ago I made a, a bad dad joke about the plural form of lettuce and got booed, so I'm not going to do that again. But there are three of those here that we're going to look at over the next week and a half. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from, from an evil conscience. 
and our bodies wash with pure water. It says draw near means approaching. It's not limited to a past tense, like approach. It, it's, it's continuous approaching. It's really similar and common uh, to a common term that we use at TCBC so much. Pursue, pursue, continuous approaching. You see it back in Hebrews chapter 4, verse uh, 14. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For if we do not have a high priest who is unable to, or, for if we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Listen to verse 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find mercy to help. In the time of need. Here's what I want you to make sure you catch. That this draw near isn't limited to make a profession. Remember the audience is the brothers. These are those who have been justified. The charge is to live your life continuously approaching pursuing the access granted to you through Jesus. It is a charge given to the church. You you see it described in Philippians 3. I want to just read it to you. Listen for it. Beginning in verse 8, Paul says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God that depends on faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. In our context, attain full access into the presence of God. Verse 12, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, No, I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Live your life continuously approaching, pursuing the access granted to you through Jesus. See, notice back to Hebrews, the author of Hebrews qualifies draw near and he says, with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, we do not draw near, we do not access God's presence through the law, through the priests, through ceremonial waters. Remember 10, 11? These things never took away and never will take away sin. It didn't work. We do not draw near with outward works. We draw near with a sincere, life-changing faith that Jesus is God. That his sacrifice is sufficient. Everything else counted as rubbish. Nothing apart from Jesus. And so we sing our comfort. Our riches, none of it 
none of it to compare, for Jesus is better. Lord, make my heart believe. Because everything, life, is in him. Not that we've already obtained it. Listen, it has been declared in faith we are justified, declared righteous before God. But now being sanctified, being made into what we have been declared to be, we draw near, we long for that day where the full access into God's presence is our reality. And so we turn from the rubbish that is exposed in our life day after day. We turn to the full assurance of the surpassing access of knowing Jesus. We draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. It's living with submission devotion, and endurance. It's a life of worship, a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable to God. It is a drawing near. It's a directional action. See, to draw near to the new and living way that is in Jesus is to leave behind the old, looking to the new, full of faith full of faith I don't I don't know your specifics but I know like you're like Paul you you're not living in full access not yet your position has been declared but it isn't your reality yet so draw near through faith Live with the assurance of the things hoped for. Live with the conviction of things not seen. Look, if you're drawing near, the full assurance of your faith, it will show. It will be active. This is what the author of Hebrews is going to explain by all these examples. If we are Drawing near, the full assurance of our faith will show. You will pursue your identity, your security in Jesus. You will grow less insecure. You will pursue truth. God's revelation will be a treasure to you and you will grow in wisdom. You will pursue repentance you will live a life putting off and putting on. And you will grow in submission. You will pursue worship. Spiritual disciplines and habits will fill your life. You will grow in devotion. You will pursue boldness, speaking the truth in love. You will grow in making Jesus known. You will pursue life on mission, purpose, you will grow in service. You will spend and be spent. Your life will not be your own. You will pursue resolve, faithful perseverance. You will grow in endurance. I, 25 years in pastoral ministry, you see people walk away. It's devastating. If, if I could, and again, it's just my observation. If I could tell you the number one trigger that causes people to walk away, it's relationships. And it's been magnified by misguided teachers who reinforce the idea that it's all about relationships, that your relationships are the primary lens in which you should see the world. You weight the value of those relationships above truth, and it's just a sneaky form of relativism that's in our culture and in our day. Jesus said in 
Matthew 10, 34, do not think I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. In saving faith, Jesus takes a back seat to nothing or no one. So over the years, I've witnessed many walk away because they do not want to lose a relationship. They would rather affirm the deliberate sin of a kid or a friend. They don't want to keep a relationship. They'd rather divorce a spouse and move on. When a faithful church admonishes them and calls them to repentance, which is to draw near with a true heart in the full assurance of their faith, like the rich young ruler, they walk away because he isn't worth it to them. They would rather trust in their own will, their own definition of comfort, their own values, their own pursuits, their own desires, and finally something that was discovered to them and revealed to them was of greater value than Jesus. See, we're tempted to keep our distance rather than draw near. But this isn't faith in Jesus. This is pride. This is sin that separates. What will you put your faith in? Is it in your pride? Is it in your will? Or is it in Jesus? His love, his sacrifice, his life. But I will make something known to you from the pages of Scripture. We are only saved by his life. So repent, turn, and draw near in the full assurance of faith. As the team comes up, let me give you one more example of what it looks like to live this out. In the church, it's common to just deal with hurt, pain, fallout. After all, all of us are sinful. And we live in a sinful and a broken world. And sure, we all get hurt. Here and there. But there are a few times in our life where we are like, I mean, hurt. It is devastating and it is painful. And as a pastor, you walk alongside of people through those seasons in their life. And when that happens within the church, within a body of believers, and a believer wrongs, I mean, wrongs another believer. And there's that level of pain. There's that level of hurt. You can just say, well, you're called to forgive. But let's be honest, that's a lot harder for us than just saying it, right? And so again and again in years over years of ministry, I've been in those settings and try to frame what it looks like as a goal to draw near. I've asked them, when you're hurt, when you're angry, when you're seeking your measure of justice, can you pray then like this? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You ready? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, there's no beef in heaven, right? You won't hold a grudge in heaven, right? You won't walk around hurt. 
See, there's a passive approach to this that just says, well, I'm just going to wait for that to happen to me. But that's not a continual approaching. That's not what it looks like to draw near. To draw near is to long for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is to live out this day, this life, with the full assurance of what is to come. That is the testimony of the gospel of Jesus at work in our lives. And so church, draw near through faith. You have access, confident access in a high priest that will not only grant you entrance, but will keep you and sustain you. Draw near through faith. Live with the assurance of things hoped for. Live with the conviction of things not seen yet. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, you are a great God worthy of our lives. May we worship you. Thank you for your love and your son that granted us access. Lord, draw us near. Jesus is better. In his name we pray, amen.